Welcome students. In this class, we would be learning how to solve cubic equations. In this class, I would be teaching you four ways as how we can use them to solve a given cubic equation. Now, this is the first method. In this method, we are given this question x cubed negative 7x negative 6 is equal to 0. The degree is 3. Now, for most, what we have to do is we would have to rewrite this in the form of ax cubed positive bx squared positive cx positive d is equal to 0. With the coefficients of x cubed will give us the value of a. The coefficient of x squared will give you the value of b. In this case, the value of b is 0. And the coefficient of the x term will give you the value for c and the constant term is d. Now if a added with c if it is equal to b added with d then x is equal to negative 1 is a root now let us check that. Now a is 1 added with c, the coefficient of x, c is negative 7 and the value of b is 0 and the value of d is negative 6. Now 1 negative 7 gives you negative 6, I'm placing it there and 0 negative 6 is negative 6. So clearly we got left side is equal to right hand side. When this happens, x is equal to negative 1 is for sure a root. Now you can simply substitute with that x is equal to negative 1 into the parent system, say 1. Clearly you see that negative 1 cubed negative 7 times of negative 1 negative 6. This is going to give me negative 1. This is going to give me positive 7 and negative 6. So we are getting 0 is equal to 0. Now once you get this, what you need to do, you have to place the value of negative 1 as a synthetic divisor. And then you have to write, uh, rewrite the coefficients. So starting with the cubic term, we don't have x squared term, so you place a 0. We got a x term, negative 7. We got a constant term, negative 6. Now you bring this 1 down and multiply that one which you brought down with negative 1 so that's going to give you negative 1 add them up this is going to give you negative 1 multiply negative 1 with negative 1 you get a positive 1 add positive 1 with negative 6 uh, negative 7 you get negative 6 multiply negative 1 with negative 6 you get positive 6 add them up you get 0 now rewrite the quantity that you got this is actually the quotient and that you have to start with degree 2. When you are operating, you start with degree 3. After the performance of the operation, the quantity that you get will start from degree 2. So this is going to be x squared, negative x, negative 6. So this is easily solvable. So x squared, negative x, negative 6 is equal to 0. You can solve it. So if you want to factorize this, you got to get a negative 6 and a negative 1. So this is going to be negative 3 and positive 2. So when you're rewriting this, this is going to be x negative 3 multiplied with x positive 2 is equal to 0. So clearly you can see x times x, x squared, x times 2, 2x, and then negative 3x, and then negative 6. So this is the solution that you have got. So if you were to rewrite the solution, the solution starts with x is equal to negative 1. That's one root. And then x is equal to negative 2 is the next root. And x is equal to positive 3 is the third root. So I have obtained three of the roots here by this technique. So this is the first method. I will move on to show you the second method. Now, this is the second method, students. So, we are given this cubic equation. x cubed negative 5x squared positive 8x negative 4 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to rewrite this. In fact, I'm going to compare it with the parent equation. 
which is ax cubed positive bx squared positive cx positive d is equal to 0 and clearly if a coefficient of x cubed a positive b positive c positive d if it is equal to 0 then x is equal to 1 is a uh, root so I will mention that let us extract the values of a b c d now clearly from here a is equal to 1 b is equal to negative 5 c is equal to 8 and d is equal to negative 4 if I were to add them I get 1 added with negative 5, positive 8, negative 4. Now 1 added with 8 gives me 9, negative 5 added with negative 4 gives me negative 9. So it's equal to 0. So this implies x is equal to positive 1 is a root. Now once you get that, you have to use synthetic division. So substitute, in fact place 1 over here and write the coefficients of the polynomial start with 1 after x cubed term you got x squared term yes it is there place negative 5 for that follow it up with the x term which is 8 and the constant term negative 4 now bring the 1 down so 1 multiplied with 1 will give you 1 1 added with negative 5 will give you negative 4 1 multiplied with negative 4 will give you negative 4 negative 4 added with 8 will give you positive 4 4 multiplied with 1 will give you positive 4 this is going to give you 0 so this is going to be x squared negative 4x positive 4 is equal to 0. Now this is nothing but our x minus 2 raised to the power 2, right? So if you were to square this, you get x squared negative 2x and positive 4 is equal to 0. This means you have x is equal to positive 2 twice. So this is a total solution for this question. So, having given you the second method, I will show you the third method now. So, this is the third type of method I am going to be showing you students. The first two methods will not work for this. So, in this case, what we got to do is, we have to take the coefficient of x cubed as, as q and the, co, the constant term as p. It doesn't matter which one you take, P or Q. Just for the sake of this illustration, I'm using P and Q. Uh, what you need to do is you need to find all the factors of P first. So I start off with plus 1, minus 1. It's a factor. Plus 2, m minus 2 or negative 2 is a factor. Positive 3 or negative 3 is a factor. And then plus or minus 6 is a factor for this quantity. Now you need to next find out all the factors of Q. So clearly plus 1 and minus 1 is a factor and plus 2 and minus 2 is a factor. Next what you need to do, you need to find P over Q. So that means you have to divide each of these elements by the first element and then write it down and then divide each of the elements present in P by Q and write that down and those would, would be the possible factors so I'm going to just do that 1 plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1 would give me plus or minus 1 and then plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1 would give me the same thing plus or minus 2 and I need to just write that down so this is what I get when I divide each of the elements by the first element and that has to next be followed by dividing each of these elements by plus or minus 2. So that would be plus or minus 1 over 2. Plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 2 is going to be plus or minus 1. So we don't need to do that. Then this is going to be plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 2. So you can place that there. And then plus or minus 6 divided by plus or minus 2 is going to give me plus or minus 3 so you don't have to do that so it's already there so these are the possible factors now we cannot be trying all of these factors but we need to use some trial or apply method so by trial or error method we need to do uh, questions of this nature so first what I wish to do is I wish to try positive 2 so if I were to take let me take x is equal to 2 so if I were to substitute x is equal to 2, I would want to know what I'm getting. So it's going to be 2 times of 2 cubed 
positive 2 of 2 squared, negative 13 of 2, positive 6. This is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, this is 4, this is 26, this is 6, 20, and positive 6 would give me 26, negative 26. This gives me 0. So clearly, x is equal to 2 is a root. So that means I can use synthetic division and reduce the system. So I start with 2 next after x cubed comes coefficient of x squared. So that's going to be 1 there followed by negative 13 and positive 6. Bring the 2 down. 2 times 2 is 4. Add them up. 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Add it. You get negative 3 and you get negative 6 is 0. So the quotient, this is called as a quotient and this is called the remainder. Now the quotient is starts with degree 2, so it's going to be 2 times x raised to the power 2, positive 5 times x, negative 3. Now you need to solve this. Now I'm going to use quadratic techniques. So for quadratic, x is equal to negative b plus or minus root of b squared, negative 4ac divided by 2 times a. Now clearly a is equal to 2, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to negative 3. So substituting the value of b, I get the value of b is positive. So minus 4 times a is 2 and c is negative 3 divided by 2 times a. So this is equal to negative 5 plus or minus root of 5 squared will give me 25. Positive, negative, negative will give me positive. 4 times 2, 8. 8 times 3 is 24. I get a positive sign here divided by 2 times 2 is 4. This can be rewritten as negative 5 plus or minus 25 positive 24 would give me 49 divided by 4. That is going to give me x1 is equal to negative 5 positive 7 over 4. This is going to be a positive 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. And then x2 is equal to negative 5, negative 7 over 4 will give me negative 12 over 4, which is equal to negative 3. So the roots are, start with negative 3, positive 1 over 2 and 2. So this is the solution set to this question. And the technique that we adopted here is method number 3. Now this is the fourth method students, this is called as by means of grouping. So with this method you would be able to simplify a cubic equation. What we need to do is you need to observe patterns to implement this method. So if I were to group this, say for example I am taking x squared out, I would be able to rewrite this as x negative 4. If I were to take negative 9 out, I would be able to rewrite this as x negative 4. Now clearly x negative 4 is a factor, I'm taking that out. So that would mean, of course, there is uh, x squared negative 9 there. So that is going to be equal to 0. So this is easily solved if we have to adopt this technique. So this is going to be x is equal to 4 and then x squared negative 9 is equal to 0. So from here x is equal to plus or minus 3. So within a minute we were able to find the roots for this particular equation, a cubic equation. So this method is also effective. So the only thing is that you need to have a keen sense of observation. Students, this is the final way. So this is the method number 5 where you have to use algebraic techniques. Now this is the question given. We are expected to solve this. Now if I were to rewrite this in terms of x negative 2 raised to the power of 3, then I would be using this formula a negative b raised to the power 3 which is nothing but a cubed negative 3 times a squared b positive 3 times a b squared. Then this is negative b cubed. Now if I were to now substitute the values for a and b then clearly x negative 2 raised to the power 3 is going to be x raised to the power 3 negative 3 times x raised to the power 2 times 2 positive 3 times x times 2 raised to the power 2 negative 2 raised to the power 3 so this is going to be x cubed 
negative 3 times 2 is 6x six squared then 4 4 times 3 is 12 positive 12x negative 8 now clearly you can compare it if you were to compare it with the original system the original system this is the equation given this is the original one let me write that down I get x cubed positive 6x squared negative 12x positive 8 now clearly you can see the signs are changing here see I need to get a positive I'm getting negative I need to get a negative I'm getting positive I need to get a positive I'm getting a negative so if I were to multiply x negative 2 raised to the power 3 then I would get negative x cubed and then followed by positive 6x squared and negative 12x and positive 8 so clearly I get a 6x squared with a positive term I get a negative 12x that's fine and I get a positive 8 but in fact I should get a positive sign here right but I'm getting a negative sign here so I have to get rid of this negative sign and how do I get rid of this negative sign if I were to add 2 times x cubed then clearly if I were to add 2 times x cubed 2 times x cubed added with negative x cubed would give me a positive x cubed so that is how we need to use algebraic techniques so therefore what I wish to do is we are given this question we are given x cubed positive 6x squared negative 12x positive 8 is equal to 0 we expect you to solve this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this entire thing as 2 times x cubed negative of x negative 2 raised to the power 3 is equal to 0 this is fair enough right now this parent equation is now simplified into this equation which we have got now this is nothing but a cubed negative b cubed formula now this formula is nothing but a minus b times a squared positive a b positive b squared so if I were to rewrite 2 times x cubed negative of x negative 2 raised to the power 3 in this fashion then it would be I need to have a, a cubed but I've got 2x cubed so this is going to be third root of 2 times x raised to the power 3 right followed by a negative sign and x negative 2 raised to the power 3 so now I have got a, a cubed and a b cubed so this is going to be equal to third root of 2 times x followed by a negative sign and b term is x negative 2 so that's fine multiplied with my a is third root of 2 times x that has to be raised to the power 2 followed by my a third root of 2 times x followed by my b x negative 2 followed by my b squared that's x negative 2 raised to the power 2 this entire thing is equated to 0 so there are two possible in fact the system is a, a times b is equal to 0 right so this is nothing but this means third root of 2 times x negative of x negative 2 is equal to 0 I'm just going to consider this first so if I were to consider this first then I can take a x out so I'm going to rewrite this as third root of 2 times x negative x positive 2 is equal to 0 I'm going to take a x out that would give me third root of 2 negative 1 positive 2 is equal to 0 I'm going to use the space I'm going to move this 2 to the other side so I would get negative 2 and over here is going to be x times of third root of 2 negative 1 this is what I've got so if I were to push this down I would get x is equal to negative 2 over third root of 2 negative 1 so this is a solution okay now if you were to use this system then you will get two complex roots two complex roots but there is just one real root this is a real root and you can try this out. Thank you students. So that completes our lesson on solving cubic equations.